Craig Zeitler. I've lived in or traveled to more than 85 countries and I've always been interested in expatriates, those adventurous spirits who choose to live overseas. Ecuador is one of the favorite destinations for U.S. expatriates. Many thousands travel here and many settle or retire in the Andean cities like Cuenca. We're going to take a quick tour around central Ecuador. We'll see what draws so many people of all ages to this interesting, exciting, and colorful country. In Cuenca, there are many fine hotels and unique restaurants in the historic central district near the town square. This is the interior of the hotel that we're staying at. It's called the Hotel of Arts, and uh, everything is pretty artistic. Social life in the expatriate communities like Cuenca is active. Here expats gather at the Secret Garden restaurant and are entertained by Joe, the owner, while his son Joseph prepares the once a week meal for guests in their luxurious home. This is the town square in Cuenca. Here we are on an open top tour bus viewing the square the city and its people. There is a Cuenca Jazz Society and now a jazz restaurant in Cuenca run by musician Jim Gala. Many new businesses are run by expatriates and local partners. There are many um, museums and uh, exhibits, art exhibits, uh, places in Cuenca. Uh, this place is the Museum of Modern Art in Cuenca, and this is the outside garden, which I find to be very nice. <laughs> Local arts and crafts are in evidence everywhere, here in sophisticated cloth making and embroidery. Uh, hand embroidered and hand finished. This outdoor market is a combination of department store, food court, and grocery store featuring local organic food. Everything here is very, very colorful. Hello. This is the new train. A couple of day trips outside the city, and it's easy to see why Ecuador is renowned for its beautiful countryside. This waterfall, this is a very famous waterfall called the Bride's Vale. And did I mention the fantastic food? How is it, Rich? Very good, quite good. And uh, I just look at the size of this broccoli. Yeah. The plantain, broccoli. Oh, I bet. <laughs> as good as grandma makes. Okay, that gives you a quick overview of an amazing country. But my real reason for being here is not just the food and travel, but to produce a video series about expatriates and to look at Ecuador and other countries through their eyes. We have interviewed and recorded the stories of several expatriates who live in Cuenca. We had conversations around a series of questions including why do you live overseas and why Cuenca? What prompted you to move abroad? Are you working or retired? What challenges do expatriates face living overseas? And of course, what advice would you have for other expatriates moving abroad? Some of the interviews are lengthy and we're archiving those complete stories for people who are interested. But for just a few minutes, let's take a look at some of the people and pieces of their stories. I think a big part of it was just to have an adventure, to 
find out who I am and see what I can do. I couldn't really handle the energy in the States anymore. It was getting too frenetic and too driven and too, too sort of um, stressful, frankly. I came down here on a lark with a friend and sort of fell in love with Cuenca. But it's a slower pace of life. The people are very nice here. Uh, there is a little, for me, there was a culture change. The language, of course, is, is one of the major things. Um, the way they do business here and the way things are done, it's not that it's wrong or bad. It's just that it's different than things are done in America. A lot of people have trouble just like getting out of the United States or envisioning themselves somewhere else. I'm not like that. So um, I sold my home and was just hanging out and as I said I came down with a friend and we sort of fell in love and thought, oh, cool little place, you know. I have a very nice two bedroom, two bath, um, large living dining area and large kitchen uh, with laundry area and things uh, with gorgeous views for 350 a month. That's without utilities. It's about another, so I would say maybe total 450 for, for everything. For your house. And then uh, what about the cost of living for food and so on? I mean, can you get by on another seven or eight hundred dollars a month? Or? Seven or eight hundred dollars a month? Yeah. yeah. I live on eight hundred dollars a month. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hospitals here are excellent, by the way. They're very modern, clean. Um, the doctors and the staffs are well trained and one of the uh, world's, uh, I'd say, best cancer hospitals is located right here in Cuenca. Oh really? Yes. I think the biggest challenge for most Americans is sort of an American-centric point of view where, you know, the expectation is it'll be like that anywhere else. And of course every culture is different. It has its own idiosyncrasies and so that, that adaptation when you move into a new culture. I'm used to it, but I hear a lot of people complain about the fact that, you know, there's just cultural differences. I mean, And basically, I hadn't made any money for a couple of years, and I decided I was just gonna follow a dream and uh, go to South America, mm -hmm. take a year off from doing anything. And so that's how I got here. That's, that was your motivation for coming? Uh, what, yeah, it was just everything, everything was over, you know? It was like finished. So I decided now it's time to do what I wanted to do. The, the weather uh, and climate in Cuenca was very, very attractive because it had been horribly hot in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think, that, you know, you need to realize that it's not going to be like um, the same lifestyle or things aren't going to work the way they do uh -huh. in the States. And, and if, if you can't embrace that, if you're not willing to... Um, you know, change or, or, you know, just kind of go with the flow, you're not going to be very happy. I had a bag with me that I set on the chair next to me. It looked impregnable, hard to get to. And as we got ready to leave, I noted no bag. This, this sh couldn't or shouldn't have happened, but it did. But I guess there's some lessons there. We truck on and uh, hopefully uh, have no more of these types of incidents, but we're much more careful. Uh, the things I like to do, traveling, camping, fishing, you can pretty much do in Ecuador for a lot less than you can do it in the United States. I've always had the idea of starting a cafe uh -huh. and financially seemed impossible in the States. <laughs> um, my parents actually found Cuenca about three years ago and moved here, and I came to visit them uh, two years ago and, and see Cuenca for the first time and absolutely fell in love with the culture here. So when I came to visit my parents and, and, and actually saw this building that was available, um, I went back to Austin and sold everything and moved here a month later. <laughs> I, I want to experience the local culture. I mean, if I wanted America, I would have stayed in America. And you, and you have to understand that you're in somebody else's country, you're in somebody else's house, and just to be a you know, a good guest, you have to accept that. Uh, I think you're cheating yourself if you just, if you come here and, and isolate yourself with, you know, with people from whatever country you're from. One thing I really like here is the Cuenca Symphony. Uh -huh. And um, the, the concerts are free and they're very good. 
and um, I enjoy going to them. Research and, and have some knowledge before you, you know, yeah. before you get over here you know, or any, any other country. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna benefit you greatly. Um, we get a little spoiled in the states, speaking uh, English as primary language. We, we start to think that everybody speaks English, even tourists that come from other countries that come to the United States usually have a <clears throat> excuse me, usually have a pretty good grasp of English. When you come to a place like Ecuador, it's it's different. Um, you're you're not going to find a, a lot of people who can can speak English. A friend of mine uh, that I met in California uh, came here, opened up a restaurant where I played the piano, and I, I visited him a year ago, and it's it kind of Cuenca kind of stuck in my mind. And what I noticed about Cuenca is all the things that are obvious to anyone. It's, it's clean, it's safe, it's, it's very pretty. But I also, what's really stuck in my mind is what's not here. I never realized how much I enjoyed walking down the street and not seeing a Starbucks sign, and not seeing billboards. And it's very pleasant because it's, you're, you're, it kind of leaves you to your own thoughts. Patience. Uh, patience, patience, patience. Not, 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 uh, not just in in interacting with the culture, and all that, but in getting getting there, getting all your getting your stuff there, getting settled in, getting you know moving the stuff. Uh -huh. to, yeah, at least for me, it was it, it, it still is a somewhat painstaking process. Again, everybody always asking you questions. Uh -huh. um, in the beginning, I did well. My limited Spanish, the word cansada and Casada, one is tired and one is married. Uh -huh. And I thought everywhere I was going, people were asking me if I was tired. <laughs> and they, well, they all want to know if you're married. Is that like uh -huh. the number one question? But at that time, I didn't realize that they were asking me. Yeah. And I thought, what is everybody asking me if I'm tired? <laughs> I, was, I was going crazy. I said, do I look that bad? Do I look that <laughs> I look so tired? Why is everybody asking me? So that I have to get a chuckle at when I yeah, think of it now. Despite the propaganda, there are alternative places to live. There is, you know, America is a wonderful place. I'm an American. I may return tomorrow, but uh, the, 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 the quality of life here, uh, like say in, in Cuenca, uh, is, is extraordinary. Uh, you, you would need to, to have a considerable income, I think, to replicate to live in, a, in an apartment or, or live in a downtown area that's that's interesting and clean. Mm -hmm. San Francisco comes to mind. Manhattan comes to mind. Uh, uh, so I think it's, it's a hell of a bargain. Yeah.